The Delphi Panthers 34-19 coming into this one. First pitch is in there for a called strike on the outer part of the plate. Schrader three for 12 in the regions, but coming into play with team leading 327 average. Was third on the team and hits a year ago with 51, now leading the team in average. The second pitch dropped her bat, but it was outside. But they are 14 and 16 on the road, are the Panthers, and that's something that they have struggled with all year long, being 16 and 3 at home, and something we'll have to see they can do today. The 1 1 outside. Kind of compounding with that, Doc. You know, they don't win too much on the road, and. The Wildcats don't really lose too much here at home. The last time they lost, you got to go back to mid-March, so it has been a while. The 2-1, swung on, popped up. It's playable. Zimmerman going over and up last year, but they have their work cut out for them against the right-hander Lindsey Hibbs for Adelphi. Started in every single game this year for the Panthers. 29 starts, 29 complete games, 1-1-9 ERA, 11 strikeouts shy. Of a thousand through her career. It'll be no easy task. As Taylor Gillis leads us off, the 1 0 pitch taken yet again low. Gillis had that big walk off three run homer in that first game against St. Thomas Aquinas at 10 0 win. She also had an RBI double in that game. One of many first team all CACC players for the Wildcats. And at the top of the first with a nice catch, now starting the bottom of the first. Slaps this one high, going over his Wengren. We'll give it a look, but that one will be out of play and foul. So Gillis will step back into the batter's box. But Gillis, sent in Monmouth, and also University of Delta. And if Wilmington takes care of business, they will win back-to-back -back super regional matchups against this same Adelphi team as Stewart watches a strike. So the count now moves to a ball and two strikes. Yeah, Stewart, 432 hitter, second on the entire Wildcat team, leading off. A little bit of a switch up from yesterday's lineup, but either way, uh, getting on first here against Hibbs would be a, a big spot to start off this ballgame. One, two. Misses outside, so the count runs even at two balls and two strikes. Pretty much all regions long, and yesterday, to your point, Justin, it's been Taylor Gillis in that leadoff spot and Stewart in the three hole, but a bit of a shift here. Let's see if it adds to an already potent Wildcat lineup. 2-2 two -two pitches slapped in the air to left. This ball falls down in foul territory. So Stewart looked like was darting to the first base bag. Just sliced it foul and we'll do it again at 2-2. Two two. You're seeing uh, her kind of get a little bit of lead. 2-2. Two -two. Ground ball up the middle in the center field. The lead off <laughs> two base. Strike out first pitch. Bunt shown. Stewart takes off the throw down. Not in time. Dang. A stolen base for Tristan Stewart. And just like that, the Wildcats have a runner in scoring position. Their team leading 52nd stolen base of the season. A great uh, run initially off the pitch. There was a close chance on the, on the tag down at second base. But now you got a runner only 120 feet away from being that first run of this ball game. And for Gibbs, it's not looking usually how she usually starts off games. Again, talk about it. Has been dominant all year, six away from the big 1,000. It's definitely probably in the back of her mind, but you had to go for the batter here and not focus on the runner that's behind you at second base. Now you would think it just takes a single with Stewart's speed. Bunn is down. It's picked up by Farhat. She hesitates. Now the throw to first is not in time. So that allows Moore to reach. Stewart yeah. heads over to first pitch from Hips. In there for a strike, more smart.